Hey guys, welcome back to Alice Customs Project Car TV. What you're going to see on this episode is how I attempt to lighten up my LS mock-up motor. Now this engine is not meant to run. When you see this video, you'll know why. But it is just a mock-up. It is just so I can stick it into a car and, you know, set motor mounts or whatever I need to do. Uh, build exhaust, anything. And uh, because of that, I'd like it to be as light as possible. Now, you'll see through this episode how much we can actually get out of it. So here's the deal. How much can you lighten an engine and it still be useful? Depends what the use is. So anyway, stay tuned and thanks for watching. So what I got is a 4.8 liter LS block. And I have been using this for quite a few years. I don't remember exactly when. Well, I got it the same day I got the forklift. So however long I've had that, I've had this. But anyway, I've used it that long and it is just my my mock-up motor um it you know fits anywhere 4853 any of those fits on here it's a gen 4 4.8 which really didn't even know until yesterday when we were trying to figure it out and the reason it's out and the heads are off and everything is that a buddy of mine uh has a truck with a 4.8 in it thinks he spun the cam bearing it's got a real bad knock and miss or not knock but a real bad squeal sound and it's missing and the oil pressure is way down and he had a mechanic look at it and they that's what they think anyway so i had two of these i had this one that i've used as my test block forever and i had another one that i picked up on the same day that i kept thinking oh maybe i'll rebuild it you know do it like as a uh a put a five or a yeah five three crank in it with the shorter rods or you know of course then you just have a five three but i don't know i kept thinking maybe i would do something with it and i never did um it was a complete engine although somebody had been into it and pulled the rockers off of it for whatever reason so this one i had like i said been using for a long time and really hadn't thought anything about it and so we pulled the other one and it had one cylinder that's got some rust in it. it. Looked like probably the spark plug was missing or the valves were open. And that's where a bunch of water sat. The rest of the cylinders looked awesome. The piston or the uh, all the bearings on it looked great. Just that one bad cylinder. So I, I thought, well, you might be able to clean that up and, you know, without too much pitting and, you know, or any pitting, hopefully, and be able to run it. Well, he took it to the machine shop. They mic'd it a little bit and said, Probably gonna have to cut it 10 over. And I was like, well, I got another block. You can have this one. I'll use the other one as my test. I don't care. Well, I hadn't thought about it, but I had thrown away the main caps years ago when I started using it, just trying to lighten the block up. You know, I mean, it's not a lot, but a couple pounds here and there. Um, I'd, I'd pulled the crank in the cam out. I'd pulled the, the uh, pistons out. In fact, I'd used those years ago. Um, we made some table legs. Out of the out of the pistons and rods, this thing has just been used for what it's in, what I wanted it for. In trying to use, think, oh well, maybe we can use this for the replacement for the 4.8 because it's got good cylinders and stuff in it. It just happened to be the first one I broke open, but I'd thrown away the main caps and we're like, well, we could steal the main caps off the other one, but that's going to require a line honing. Nobody in our area does that, so you got to drive about 200 miles to Albuquerque to do that. Then on top of that, you have to pay them to do it and wait, you know, get in line and wait. Well, we pretty quickly figured out it didn't make financial sense to do that when these blocks are readily available everywhere. We have the one coming out of his truck. He's just very concerned that having spun, if he's right, having spun the cam bearing, that the block will be ruined. Well, as we know from working on that red C10, and I don't remember if I mentioned it or not, but when we pulled that engine to send it over to the machine shop for a rebuild because of a rod knock, and it had like 125 thousandths taken out of the, rod, out of the uh, crank. I mean, it was, it was bad. So we'd gotten a new crank for that. We had spun all of the cam bearings in that thing and the block was perfect. We're reusing the block on that 6.0 and I keep telling my buddy, well, we probably just reuse your block. We just need to pull the motor and see how bad it is. He, he wants to try and do it all in one weekend. Pull the motor, put the motor back in, not have his truck apart for a long time. And I get on one side, it's like stuff gets lost if it's apart for a long time. But on the other side, pr chances are that's a good block. Anyway, that's a long story to get you to where I'm at. This block is back because 
we can't use it because it doesn't have any main cap. And I thought, you know, all the times I've used this, you still have to have a cherry picker to move this damn thing around because it's it's heavy, especially, you know, you start dressing it up with some components, but I was just curious, how heavy is it? And can we make it lighter with tools here in the shop? And I don't mean getting a giant mill out and trying to mill away everything. I'm like Sawzall, plasma, whatever I happen to have here that might cut away at this thing. What could we do to lighten this block up to make it a little easier to handle? And in that, i just curious, like, how much does it weigh? How much can we get out of it? Would it be worth it for you to try it at home? If you, you know, if you were gonna do a couple of engine swaps over time, would it be worth figuring this out? So what I've got here is a uh, scale for, it's really for scaling your car. It goes back and I've got the, uh, I've got the readings here. So right now we're just using the uh, left rear scale as far as what's on my meter. And it's reading zero. I'm just checking that as I turned it on. And let me roll this up. Let's we'll slide the jack or the, uh, the jack, the uh, scale under it. Roll it back onto it. Get a weight, and then let's go to cutting and see what we get out of it. It's fluctuating back and forth just a little bit at 219 to 220 pounds. Now this is a bare block. It has a few of the aluminum gaskets still stuck to it, which I'm going to save because when I'm done, I'm going to put the aluminum covers back on. Uh, we had one thrust bearing, one half of one thrust bearing still in it. The cam bearings are in it, and, I, and the gasket for the valley pan is on. Um, and I, I try and leave the gaskets when I'm putting the pieces on. I mean, I don't care if they're tore up and whatever. I try and leave those on just so that the engine kind of is the actual dimensions that that you would use, yeah, so like including the head gaskets. I, I kept the old head gaskets just so the head is that minute amount further away from the engine mounts and everything else that it actually is in real life so that when I build an exhaust system, I know that amount shouldn't matter, but I just take that variable out of it. So now the thought is, what can we do to lighten this? And I'm thinking we could be able to, we ought to be able to take out these main journals I think that one would be fairly easy. We might be able to take out some of the valley between the cylinders. We're just gonna roll this out here a little bit further or pull it out here to the end of the forks. We're just gonna see what we can cut away. We're gonna start with a plasma cutter, see if we can cut out a couple of these webs through here. We'll start on this end so you guys can see it and then we'll see where it goes. All right, well, you can see where I'm going with it. I'm gonna cut four more of these out. And then I'll bring you back. We'll see what else we can do. Now, some of you are asking, hey, why are you doing this? You can go and buy, I think it's from Speedway, a sheet metal engine block, you know, and heads and to where it's fairly light, you can move it around. 
There used to be a company, and they may still be around, but they used to make one in like styrofoam. It was a little stronger than styrofoam. And I actually had one of those many, many years ago. I didn't own it. It was a customer's, and it got taken back by the customer. But I liked it a lot because you could bolt. It had a thread inserts, so you could bolt heads to it. You could bolt headers to it. It was very light. You could easily move it by hand. Um, one of the things I always worried about was you had to be real careful. It felt like the inserts, the threaded inserts, would want to pull out sometimes. So you had to be pretty careful with that. Um, so why am I doing this? One, I don't want to spend the money for the sheet metal version. And I've looked at them and almost pulled the trigger on them a couple of times. Two, I already have this and we learned yesterday that the block is no good for anything. And three, uh, it's for science. We, we're going to call it for science. How much can you take out? One of the things I decided to do was leave the main bearing uh, journals or whatever on the second and third journals because they're lined up real close with the engine mounts. And so that should add a little bit of strength here to keep this thing from moving. I'm gonna take this cylinder and half of this one out and I'm gonna take this cylinder and probably just stop right there, just take this cylinder out leaving these just because again keeping that strength in this web here um, I can kind of split this cylinder in half right here and and cut this one kind of over on the angle here and just take out as much as I can but leaving strength around the engine mount because I don't want the block flexing I don't think it would very much but we're bolting stuff on it all the time and and you're bolting it to frames and you're using it as your guide for where motor mounts need to be installed or built to so, but I want to lighten it up as much as possible for science. All right, let's move on. All right, this block has gotten very hot. These cylinders are like ovens. I'm trying a thicker glove and just trying to break out pieces of the cylinders is at the bottom of course you know you got water jackets around around the cylinder and up into the head but through the bottom you don't want that so the the casting is a lot thicker there so it's trying to get a few pieces out here and there trying to leave enough uh, me, you know metal in here that we support this area Maybe ruining the whole thing and spending hours playing at it, but science. So here's everything that got cut out, and here's a close-up. So I left these two webs in just to strengthen the area behind the motor mounts. Probably not necessary for what I'm using it for, but... Well, you've seen the carnage on the floor here. It's still heavy, so let's get the scales out. Okay, the scale is reading zero. Now it reads 143 pounds. So, okay, we went from 219 to 143, which is a 76 pound reduction. I left two webs in, as I've shown you, um, the lifter valley in that area, the cylinders. So you could probably take out so roughly 25 more pounds if you really carve away out there. And if you were doing that, you'd, there'd be a few other areas that you could carve away a little more. So you'd get a little bit more. My hope was that I would get this down to like 100 pounds. 143, it's not too bad, but even if I cut out the rest of the webs, val lifter valley cylinders, and then just really took my time cleaning it up, getting it as, as much material out of it as possible, we're not gonna get to 100 pounds. So, because this was for science and for you guys, we found out that if you cut out three quarters of all of the material in here, you get rid of 75 pounds. Might make an awesome two-cylinder engine now. Imagine that. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know, I don't even know if it would have that much good sound. So with it all finished up, you can see it again, now painted up. I, I just chose yellow because I had a couple cans of it. 
and it doesn't cover very well anyway, so it did take most of the two cans. The engine is not light in the end. Um, we were able to knock off about 75 pounds, you know, which will make it a little easier to manhandle around when you're trying to get motor mounts set or just whatever. But it was an interesting, you know, chore. Uh, it was a lot of work. I would not recommend bothering with it. Um, by the time I'd done all that, I'd burned up probably six and a half hours of time. Uh, ruined a sweatshirt, ruined two pairs of gloves, got a couple burns on one hand, um, and the burns were through the gloves. It's just, you know, like you'd be cutting away at something and, and there'd be a bolt hole or something else, and all of a sudden you got a torch blowing right back on your hand. So um, I did, in fact, try a torch, a cutting torch, you know, oxyacetylene, and that worked, but it was melting the cast iron away. And full disclosure, I've never tried to cut cast iron before that I, that I can remember. Um, so I don't know if I just didn't have the torch hot enough, too hot, whatever, to where it wouldn't cut through that cast iron rather than just kind of melt it away and make it slag off. Like when I would go to cut like through one of the steel sleeves in the cylinder, it would cut and then as soon as it hit the cast iron, it would just start melting. So I didn't try, I didn't really do that very much because it didn't seem to be working. Did most of the work with the plasma cutter. I think if I were ever to try it again, which I won't be because it's not worth it, as you saw. But I think I would try and go get, I think it's called Jet Rod, and it's rod that you can use on your arc welder for cutting. And I think I would go try and get that and see if I couldn't cut through it easier with that. It also might let you get your hand a little further away from everything that's going on there. But overall, um, I'm happy to have my mock-up motor painted and you know lightened as much as we could get. So I just wanted to add all that in. Um, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, all that other YouTube stuff. Please leave me a comment below. You guys, so leaving a comment or uh, putting a thumbs up or whatever on the uh, video, it really does help the algorithm figure out that some of these videos are things you guys like to see and it will process them more for other people to see, which gives me an idea of where to, where to spend my time as far as making videos. So I do appreciate you. I, I really enjoy making different videos for you guys. Um, so coming up on the next video probably will, uh, will likely be some stuff on the C10 that I just found a few more items that I hadn't finished, mostly on the bed. And with that, that truck is off to paint probably this week. We'll be getting the Scout back very soon, and it's looking pretty awesome. Um, we still have to do all the assembly, but we got to get the wiring and some of the plumbing done before that's ready. So stay tuned. New videos coming up soon. We'll see you guys on the next one. Again, thanks for watching.